The winter storms of Bass Strait launch their final assault on the coast, and at last the strong winds and cold waters abate and give way to a new season. Spring signifies the beginning of the migration of various species entering Victoria's bays and ports. Navigating through Port Phillip Bay heads, huge schools of Australian salmon feed ravenously on the tiny plankton driven to the surface of the nutrient-rich water. Just north of Point Lonsdale, the serene waters of Lonsdale Bight provide ideal habitat for masses of egg-laden cephalopods. During spring, these shallow weed beds have just the right amount of light, tidal movement and prey to justify the location as the southern calamari's mating grounds. Calamari are a short-lived, fast-growing ambush predator which rely on their superior eyesight for stalking prey such as shrimp and small fish. Significant gatherings of squid indicate the beginning of mating season and the pursuit of available females is instantaneous. A male will drive a female away from the group, insistently manoeuvring around her until she gives in to his request. The male will flip upside down and extend his hexacotylus arm, which scrapes the sperm onto the female. The female can mate with several males and hold onto the sperm for a period. This helps the diversity of the species. When the female lays her eggs, the males can be seen guarding her and acting as a distraction to potential predators. Clumps of bright white eggs are littered throughout the shallow weed beds. Females add to a previously established bunch or create their own. Gestation is for 30 to 60 days with juvenile squid emerging during the night. Southern calamari don't die directly after spawning but their life cycle won't exceed a year. Variation in water temperatures, habitat and predators all influence the mating process. Some squid will procreate numerous times throughout their short lives. For many anglers right around Port Phillip Bay, squid fishing provides a year-round staple. And today, although we don't have the best weather, we're going to head over to Queenscliff to talk to Corey Green. Corey works at Depi in the fisheries department and has spent more time studying southern calamari in Port Phillip Bay than anyone else. So we thought speaking to Corey would be a great place to start in our search for big spring squid. Anecdotal evidence amongst anglers suggests that the current squid fishery is being accessed at a sustainable rate and there isn't any real reason to change bag limits or implement seasonal closures. It will be interesting to confirm with an expert whether these assumptions are correct and whether recreational anglers are actually having an adverse effect on the fishery. G'day Corey, how are you? Good thanks Dan. Thanks for coming down mate, we're really looking forward to having a chat to you about Southern Calamari. Happy to be here, mate. Okay, so Corey, the first question I have for you is just a general one about the distribution of squid around the bay. So why is it that the big breeding squid tend to stay in this more tidal part of the bay and you get the smaller juvenile squid, you know, moving right up into the northern reaches? That's a good question, Dan. And the larger squid are down here because of habitat. And there are two species of seagrass down here, Amphibolus and Zostra. And that's the key species of seagrass that the squid need to lay their eggs. Right. Okay, so annually then, can you give us a bit of a rundown of their spawning pattern? When do those big ones come in? When do they yeah, breed? How yeah. does it all roll? Yeah, sure. Well, they spawn all year round, which is fascinating about this species. But they have peak spawning that occurs during about the spring and summer periods. So in terms of these spawning peaks that we have, during the year. Are there other environmental factors that, that influence that? Yeah, certainly is. And probably the main thing is temperature and the okay. other one's food availability. Right. Temperature because the eggs that they lay need to develop under certain conditions, so that'll be the optimum time. So more recently, Corey, you've done research into southern calamari in the bay. Uh, some of that included acoustic tracking. Can you tell us a bit about that? So what we did is we had these acoustic tags. They're about that big and we put them in the, in the squid and we let them go. And around the Port Phillip Bay, we had about 73 acoustic receivers. These are detectors that we use to find out whether a squid passes within the region. So what were some of the key findings that you got out of that acoustic tagging? Well, we found out that particularly in the southern part of the bay is that the, the squid tend to hang around in one particular region. They move off in small areas at different times of the, of the day and even over different days, but they generally stayed where they were. So that was from the spawning period. 
but in other times of the year we found that they move quite considerable distances. What we found as well is that they also use the tidal currents as well yeah. to, to influence their, their movement as well so they don't have to use so much energy to, to get from A to B. So a lot of people would be pretty interested to hear that squid only live for a year. Mm. From a scientific perspective how do you guys know that or how do you measure it? Yeah, it's a good question. What squid have is a thing called a statolith. They've got two of them and used for hearing and balance and they're made out of bone and a protein. We take out these small bones, grind them in half and have a look at them under the microscope. And what we can see is alternating pattern of dark and light bands. Right. Similar to what you see if you cut a tree in half and see the growth rings. Okay. So these bands are formed daily. Okay. So we count up these bands to find out how old the squid is in terms of days. So Corey, a couple more questions then on the biology of squid. Tell us a bit more about calamari eyesight. Calamari have a very big eye, probably one of the biggest eye per body size in the world really. And funny enough, they're actually colour blind. But for the fishermen out there, jig colour is very important. So there's different shades of grey that will occur at different depths. Okay. So the purpose of doing the research over the last couple of years is to help manage the fishery. Do anglers have a big impact? Can we fish them out? Are there any problems associated with us fishing for calamari in the bay? Good question. We need to know as fisheries scientists a lot of information so we present that to fisheries managers to effectively manage them. The more information we have, the better. Right. Yes, recreational fishing has an impact on, on the stocks. Yes, commercial fishing has an impact on the stocks. But also the environment also has a massive impact on the stocks as well. So what is the future of the calamari fishery in our local waters? Yeah, well, we think it's very, very bright. You okay. know, they're fast growing. We've got plenty of habitat around at the moment and there's a continual population being rejuvenated year after year. It's spring and today we launch at a place close to my heart on the Mornington Peninsula in Rye. We've shot across in the boat to the Bellarine Peninsula and we're now in Lonsdale Bight adjacent to the Port Phillip Heads. Today we're searching for southern calamari and we're going to use a range of techniques to see if we can put a few in the boat. There's already a whole range of boats out here so let's get to it and see what we can do. Okay, so we're in about 11 metres here in Lonsdale Bight. Now a lot of the time you can use your sounder to check out whether you are over sand and weed or whether it's a hard rock bottom. Today we're lucky enough in that it's so clear that we really don't even need to use the sounder. We can see the sand holes, we can see the weed, and what I'm really looking for is some of that nice grassy weed. Being ambush predators, calamari need extensive cover to intercept their prey. Lying in wait amongst the grassy weed beds, they effectively blend into their environment before launching an attack. For my money, the best thing to do in this scenario is to run a range of different options for catching squid. And it can be everything from working a jig, rod and reel, having a couple of draggers down, to getting back to the absolute basics in the old float and silver whiting. Now this is for a lot of people probably where they started their squid fishing and during spring still accounts for some very big squid. The floating rig is really the simplest of rigs. It basically consists of a squid prong with a hardy bait threaded down. We usually use a nice little coastline snap. That way you can change your bait if you need to. A ball sinker to help get it down. The big squid float with the weighted end and then basically a float stop and that's all you need. The key to using these guys, and it's really easy on a day like today because it's absolutely crystal clear, is to get it down into that bottom metre of the water column. So even out here in 10 or 11 metres, we can actually try and sink that bait right down to the bottom and make sure that it's just suspended, you know, the odd metre, three feet above the weed. After that, pretty easy, get them in the water. Size isn't an indicator of gender for southern calamari, and if an angler catches a large squid, it could be either sex. Calamari are voracious feeders and commonly attack prey of a similar body size to their own. They are known to grow to at least 3.6 kilograms. Okay, so we've got a couple of floats out. 
Now we are going to use a number of rods and we're going to use the rods in different techniques. Essentially when we're in deep water I like to run a couple of jigs down very deep which you literally drag along. So in the rod holder about two kilos of drag on the reel and away you go along with the jig that you work. Eggy style, Japanese style, work it aggressively, work it passively. We'll just work it all around the boat until we try and find some action. The classic shape of the squid jig hasn't changed since its invention in Japan 500 years ago and is still used by modern day squid fishermen. Mimicking the appearance of a distressed, injured prey, squid are particularly responsive to this design. So one of the things that's come from Japan along with all the actual squid tackle is the retrieve technique. Once upon a time ago it was very much let the jig sink down, then pop, pop, bring it back slowly, see if you get any weight, see if you get a squid. Now it's a very aggressive technique which most people employ. The beauty of that is that squid are a very visual predator. So the idea is that when they see that jig darting through the water, it really is mimicking a bait fish. It grabs their attention and they're much more likely to strike. But the basic premise is that you give three big whips winding each time you raise the rod and the idea is at the end of the whips you've still got a fair bit of tension on your line that way if a squid sees the jig moving through the water heads up wax it you can either feel it through the line or you can actually see it by that little bit of line movement pushing through the water and away you go you're into them as with any type of lure fishing persistence is the key to success Actively work your lures, scout likely looking weed patches and eventually you'll locate Southern Calamari. Oh! Yeah, this is one. We've got one. Not big, but squid. Yeah, nice little squid. Okay, let me grab him. Let's have a look at him. Alrighty. A lot of guys often refer to those as the candles and essentially what will happen is a squid will come up to a jig and if you're lucky enough to see it in shallow water these candles shoot out and grab the jig. If they're tentative often they use that to just feel it, sometimes they'll back away, sometimes they'll grab the jig and rip it straight back in and that's when you tend to get the very solid hookups. But uh, if you hear people talking about the candles that's what they tend to be talking about. There are some fantastic seagrass beds close to shore and it's common to see boats drifting in only a few feet of water using a baited jig to try and tempt a squid bite. Diversifying your fishing techniques will help you catch more fish. I'm using both artificial jigs and a McLaughlin silver whiting floating approximately three feet off the bottom. It is difficult to predict whether the bigger squid will prefer the jig being worked vigorously or the passive baited jig. Having an assortment of options gives you the best chance in identifying the fish's preference on any given day. Traditional beta jigs have given way to ultra effective modern eggy gear and techniques. However, it is still worth taking a float setup when chasing calamari. The float has just gone under and I think we have what feels like a decent sized squid. This is the first one to come up on the float today. So here we go, let's have a look at him. Oop. Getting a bit of a lunge going there, so let's hope he's a bit better than the other models we've managed to pull in. Oh, yeah, he's a better squid, that's for sure. The key is you don't really want to absolutely wrench him in because you're still in danger, even with these big prongs, of actually ripping him out of the tentacles or pulling a tentacle off. So when he really starts pulling, I'm trying to give him a bit, and it does look like he's only just hooked up too. So I really don't want to lose this guy. I'm going to let him run a little. Oh, did you see that? It looked like an arrow squid, I think, came up and just attacked the float. Here we go. Yeah, that's a much better calamari. This one, I might actually grab the net for. I'm here, big squidgen. Alrighty. It's got me caught nicely there in the prong, and that's a very nice calamari. Hey! <laughs> I deserve that, and we're going to be doing a bit of boat washing today. But as you can see, and look, we've got another one on the rod here as well. It is all happening. Well, when it rains, it pours, they say. And here we go. We've got another one. He's a bit smaller, but still another nice calamari. Two on this patch. Repeat what we just did. 
There you go. Now I'll get the prong out of this larger one. Let's have a look at him. All right, and that is what we were looking for. This squid has just made an absolute mockery of the side of the boat, but that is what a big breeding southern calamari looks like. So we only see squid this size in the bay for a small window of the year. They come in, they find their little patch of weed and they lay their eggs. They've got a very short lifespan, only living for about 280, 300 days. So you don't have to feel bad about taking one like this home for the table for a feed. That's an absolute beauty. All right, here we go. Looks like we've got another one. Ooh, an arrow. Now this is not what we are after. This is what people call an arrow or an aero squid and I'm not going to put my fingers near him because they are extremely aggressive. So I'm going to keep my hand away from his beak. But still good bait. We might use that on gummies or snapper in the weeks to come so I'll keep him anyway. Lonsdale Bight and Queenscliff is one of the first places that migrating snapper will be caught in the bay. Anglers keenly anticipate the new season fish arriving in this area. Over the last five years there's been a massive increase in the amount of squid technology and tackle on the market in Australia. Two key components of that for me are the squid jigs, of which there's now a huge array out there, massive range of colours, different sizes and shapes, and also squid rods. Today we're using the Samaki Eggy Inked, which is a cracker of a rod and demonstrates the three key features that I see in a squid rod. The first is the length. This rod's eight foot six. Now most of them range between eight foot and eight foot six. And that's all in aid of your casting distance. The idea with a squid rod is you want to cover plenty of ground. Whether you're in the boat or out on the pier, you want to be able to cast a long distance and work that jig all the way back to you. They also are a slow taper rod, which means that they bend really from the butt or the hilt right through to the tip. And the idea of that is to absorb the squid lunges. So the whole rod acts as a shock absorber as that squid tries to surge away from you. The third facet is using these micro guides. Now the idea of those guides is again to aid casting. What happens is the line gets choked very quickly through this stripper guide as it comes barreling off the spool, creating very little friction as the line runs out through the rest of the rod. And again, that's gonna help propel your jig further into the distance. We've teamed it up with a Tika Stunner Reel in size 2000. We run six to eight pound Strike Pro braid. And right at the end, we've got about a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. The rip is the only entrance into Port Phillip Bay. Due to the ever-present risk, cargo ships use specifically trained pilots to manoeuvre their vessels into the bay. Controversially, Port Phillip had a mass-scale dredging in 2008, which had an immense consequence on the tidal movement and water volume entering the bay. Oh, there we go. There's another one. Now we've just been picking up a few through this drift here, so when we get this one in the boat, we might just turn around and go and do it all again, I think. They're not huge squid, but they're nice calamari. They'll be good for dinner tonight. When it comes to squid jig colours, there are a million out there, literally. And I can say from my experience in the shop, two of the biggest sellers that we find we go through are not necessarily the outer colours and what I mean by that is jigs are generally made up of two components. One is the foil underneath and then the coloured material over the top. But the two bigger sellers are jigs that have the red foil under like this Strike Pro jig. The other colour is gold foils. Now almost irrespective of what the outer layer of material has on them, those two coloured jigs seem to be a winner. They work in low light conditions, the golds tend to work through the middle of the day. You'll find that they just do catch fish. Having said that, when it comes to the outer layer of the jig, this is obviously a bright pink, we find that a whole range sell, and it really pays to take a range with you whenever you go on a squid trip. Take some brights in case the water's dirty, but also take natural coloured ones, like you might find hanging around the weed. Little dirty coloured bait fish are going to be hanging in and out of those uh, weed patches that the squid sit by. Uh, it also pays to have both a black and a white jig. Blacks are good because they create silhouettes, and whites, I think, I suppose, they, they look like a silver mullet as they shoot through the water. 
So this guy's got a scar on him, which probably isn't surprising because even in the bay here, I'd say pretty much everything would eat squid. From the little guys, which would get taken by flathead, to these bigger sized squid, which no doubt would be attacked by everything from snapper to barracuda, snook, you name it, there'd be something out there that eats them. Anglers fishing the southern end of Port Phillip Bay targeting squid aren't just restricted to Lonsdale Bite. On the Bellarine Peninsula side, you also have Queenscliff and Swan Bay, while on the Mornington Peninsula side, you have Point Nepean and Portsea, which can also offer some great fishing. Conveniently, all these spots are in pretty close proximity to one another, and if one area isn't producing results, an angler can simply move on to the next spot. Point Nepean has been the site of considerable mystery. In December 1967, the Australian Prime Minister Harold Holt disappeared from Cheviot Beach. The Prime Minister was known as an avid spear fisherman and presumed drowned. Despite a large scale search by police, Navy divers, Air Force, Army and local volunteers, his body was never recovered. All right, we've got one here. Now, we've just shot across from Lonsdale Bight. It's only a couple of k's over to Point Nepean, just for a change of scenery. And this is the beauty of this part of the world, is that you've got a couple of great tidal zones for fishing for big squid. And we've just pulled up. We're literally about halfway through our first drift, and there we go. A nice, big southern calamari. There we go. Another very nice calamari. Now, so just inside here in Point Nepean, there is a marine park. It is pretty tight to the shoreline, so you can fish quite comfortably outside the marine park and do nice long drifts. We often talk down here about fishing the tidal areas of Port Phillip Bay, and what we mean by that is really fishing around the heads, and that can include this whole section around Point Nepean, right back to Portsey as well as over on the Bellarine Peninsula where we've been fishing earlier this morning. It's a great area because it's very close to the ocean and you get a lot of these big breeding squid coming straight in from offshore to find their hidey hole to lay their eggs. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to ikijimi a squid, which is basically a Japanese technique for killing them. The idea is that it's humane, it's quick, and it's also the best way of preserving the meat if you want to take it home for the table. You take a spike and you basically try and hit them in the nerve centre, which will kill them instantly. As you can see, squid's gone white, it's now dead, and that's the best way to preserve it if you want to take it home and have a good meal. With spring in full swing, the calamari fishing is peaking. Land-based anglers are catching plenty of squid and the piers are literally at capacity with fishermen hoping to catch a fair. An extremely popular species to target for Victorians, the breeding run of spring calamari is something eagerly anticipated every year. Since 1973, Strike Pro has led the way in lure design. Whether you're a recreational angler or tournament pro, Strike Pro provides the very best lure option for your target species. Anglers around the world trust in Strike Pro to connect them to that next fish. Join the revolution, casting into the future. Strike Pro, available at all good tackle stores.